Hey there all five of you that are going to watch this video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. What you're looking at on your screen is a character controller that I've spent over the last month working on. It's it, it's not really a month's worth of work. It's during the holidays and I had COVID for half of it, so I was at limited capacity for productivity. <laughs> I was at a very limited capacity of productivity. Nonetheless, it still took me over a month. Um, I think it's one of the best ones on YouTube. Maybe the best one? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you to figure out. But um, if you're looking for a character controller that uses rigid body physics, Cinemachine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity, then this video series just might be for you. I'm also going to show you how to implement a basic game manager, an input handler that supports both gamepad and mouse and keyboard input, and a camera controller. As for the pros and cons of using a character controller like this, a big pro, obviously, is that it uses physics. If you're not wanting to use physics, then you should not be using this character controller. The great thing about Unity physics is that they're simple to implement and they're a lot of fun to play with, and the possibilities are just endless. You can play with this for hours on end, with all different types of scenarios, and it's just it's endless. As for other pros, it works well for a lot of different types of games, and with this specific character chore, I was very careful of how I implemented it so that nothing needs to be interpolated. Interpolated. There we go. So that nothing needs to be interpolated. Gosh, that word gets me every time. And as for the cons, it can get difficult to manage when you start to scale the game up. Uh, that's just native to the Unity's physics system. That's not specific to this character controller, but this type of character controller that's using Unity physics is it can get out of hand very quickly. And then the bigger problem is that the time scale can get messed up when the frame rate is less than or more than ideal. That is a topic that goes way out of the scope of this video. We will touch base more on this later because it's very important you understand this and what that means. So stay tuned for more on that. Alright, now I'm going to demonstrate the features that I've implemented into this character controller so far. Uh, we have basic movement. By the way, I'm using a gamepad, not my mouse and keyboard, because you don't want to listen to my keyboard click clack away. And I'm not very familiar with the gamepad, so I'm likely going to hit the wrong button many, many times. But as you can see, the movement is very smooth. Honestly, it's a lot smoother what I'm seeing compared to what I'm recording. Because I'm doing a monitor capture, which is probably a bad idea, but you know, whatever. And then we have the ability to crouch, and when we crouch, movement speed is reduced. And if I go over to the stairs, well, real quick, I can run too. Different button for that. I cannot crouch and run. I can only run when uncrouched. And if we go over to the stairs, you'll see we cannot go any further than that. But if I crouch, we can go further. If I uncrouch, it pushes it out. I should set this up so I can demonstrate it, but I am far too lazy. If I am crouched and I am under a completely flat plane, it will, and I try to uncrouch, it will partially uncrouch, but it will still remain partially crouched <laughs> until, because there's a head check that's done, and until the head check says that there's space to uncrouch fully or more, it, it will not uncrouch fully or more. That was poorly explained, but I'm sure you understand. If there's room, he'll uncrouch. It's just like real life. <laughs> uh, I can jump, and when I jump, I'll just stand next to these blocks. If I tap it real quick, you can see it's a very low jump. And if I hold it, it jump much, much higher, depending on how long I hold the button for. And then also, I can coyote time off the edge. And there's also a forgiveness if I press the jump button twice, once, twice, and say I, the second jump or the third jump, don't matter if I just keep spamming it. If I'm pressing the jump button way too fast, it will honor it if it's within a certain amount of time, and it will let me jump anyway. It just gives it a very fluid, natural feeling. It doesn't feel rigid. doesn't feel like I'm getting cheated at jump. It feels good. Um, we can go over bumps. And in the same way, we can go upstairs, and we can stop on them, and we can go back down. You notice we go downstairs faster than we go up. It's because of gravity. Uh, we can slide along surfaces. You won't get hung up. You can go up pretty steep slopes, albeit very slowly. It's faster to jump up them. 
and when you jump off the edge, gravity does increase and you will slowly fall faster and faster until you hit terminal velocity. Again, depends on how steep the slope is. This one we cannot go up unless we jump up it and eventually it will just get steeper and steeper. And if you look, we're actually slowly falling down this one because it's too steep. You can change the camera. This is third person view. You also have first person view and third person orbit. You can also zoom in and out. So I'll be in my ugly mug. There we go. Go back to first person. You see I have a pointer with some sort of arm thing sticking out. I can change the color of that from light blue to light red. That means that the mode is blue or red mode. And if I enable it, I'll turn dark blue or dark red. Dark blue is a tractor beam sort of effect. It just pulls, not really a tractor beam. And then red is a push effect. Anyway, you, know, you can have a lot of fun with this. But uh, with the blue one, if I pull something towards me and it hits, you'll see in the bottom left, the number's going up. I'm collecting them. And you can effectively just play the trail right on through. If you want, you can come through and just push things around some more, make it a little more bigger. And this will also work on even this other guy here. And if I press Bhutan, we'll switch to this character. He has all the same functionality. We can also, there's no jitter, I'm moving up and down on a moving platform. I can jump on it. And then same thing with rotating platform. No jitter, I'll try to counter it. Moving a little faster than what I can turn. <laughs> but you'll notice when I first land, it takes a second for it to get up to speed. So it's not just instantly torquing my spine in half. Half steps. It will not go up the full step, of course. You see every now and then, a box will go flying out from underneath me. It's because there's actually a script that applies forces the opposite direction that I'm moving, so I'm kind of like kicking it out from underneath me. Just something I implemented for a little fun. And sometimes you'll see... That's something I should probably fix, but it's kind of fun too. See those two? They went flying. But uh, sometimes when a box just happens to come up underneath you with it, you can just keep jumping off it because you think you're grounded. Look at those two there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's my rigid body character controller. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you'd like to get the full source of the whole project, I can package it up. Just I'm not going to do it for no reason, though. But um, just give me a like, subscribe, and put a comment in the comments section asking for that. And if enough people do that, I will provide it. Um, otherwise, just watch all the video series. The whole source will be there. I'll show you pretty much everything. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.